Hello everyone, welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to take up the 12th numerical on sampling theorem. Please note, this is also one of the previously asked MSE questions. Let me read out the question here. A signal x of t equals cos 2 pi t is ideally sampled. Sketch the spectrum of the sampled signal and find the reconstructed signal x dash of t for the following values of the sampling period Ts and ideal low pass reconstruction filter bandwidth W. Here we are given two cases. In case 1, Ts equals 1 divided by 4 and W equals 2. And in the second case, Ts equals 2 divided by 3 and W once again equals 2. Let us start with the solution part here. Let me rewrite the given equation. So, I can write this as cos of 2 pi f 1 t. Therefore, f 1 equals 1 hertz. Please note this is also equal to w which is the highest frequency component of the given signal. Let us now move on to the part A of the question. For part A, we are given Ts equals to 1 divided by 4 and W equals to 2. Since Ts is given as 1 divided by 4 and is equals to 1 divided by Fs, we identify therefore Fs as 4. Let me go back to the original equation x of t and call this as equation 1. Let us now apply Fourier transform on both sides of equation 1. We get it as x of f equal to 1 divided by 2 into delta of f minus f1 which is 1 plus delta of f plus f1 which is once again 1. Let me call this as equation 2. From equation 2, we identify two frequency components which is minus 1 hertz and plus 1 hertz. We will write it here. And with this information, now we are ready to plot the spectra of x of t. Let me start with the x axis first. Then we have the y axis. This is x of f. As shown above, there are two frequency components one at plus one, another one at minus one. Go back and check equation two. Each frequency component has an amplitude of one divided by two. Right. This is the spectrum of the given input signal. Let us now move on to the next part of the question which is to plot the sampled signal spectra. We know that the spectrum of the sampled signal can be written using the expression. x delta of f equals fs summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity x of f minus n fs. Here the value of fs is given as 4 which is directly equivalent to 1 divided by ts. Therefore, I will rewrite this equation as 4 into summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity x of f minus 4 into n. Let me call this as equation 3. Now, let us go back to equation 2 which is the Fourier transform of the signal x of f. We have to now substitute this x of f into equation 3 by replacing wherever there is an f in the expression 2 by f minus 4 fs which I will do it here. Therefore, x delta of f is equal to 4 into summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity, we have 1 divided by 2 multiplied by 
delta of f minus 4n minus 1 plus delta of f minus 4n plus 1. I will simplify this. So, this will reduce to 2 summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity delta of f minus 4n minus 1 plus delta of f minus 4n plus 1. Let me call this as equation 4. Now, to plot the spectra, we need to now substitute the values of n equals to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 etc and find frequency components for each case. Right. So, with that you can now plot the spectra. Now, what I will do is instead of substituting n equals to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 etc. I am going to use the concept of spectral replication in the sampling process. What it means is that the original signal spectra when it is sampled at a frequency of f s is shifted left as well as right by the value of n f s. Using this property, I can now plot the sampled signal spectra as Let me start by plotting the original frequency samples which are at 1 and minus 1. Now, you must note that the samples here do not have the same amplitude as that of the original signal because as per equation 4, the samples of this particular spectra have an amplitude of 2. Therefore, this will be 2 for each of the samples. Now, I am going to apply the sampling principle, particularly I am going to use the spectral replication. So, what usually happens is when I perform sampling, the original spectra is shifted left and right by a value of n f s. So, let us now take each of the samples and shift it left as well as right by multiple values of f s. For example, when n is equal to 1, I shift the spectra left and right by the value of f s equals to 4. So, we have plus 1 here, plus 1 plus 4 is 5. So, 5 will appear somewhere here. So, I have to now draw this sample once again here. In a very similar fashion, when I do the same, but now shifting left, we have plus 1 minus 4, which is equal to minus 3, which is somewhere here. And I just redraw the same sample once again. Now, I do the same for the left side sample which is located at minus 1. So, quite obviously, it will appear from minus 5 and plus 3. Right. So, this is the spectra of the sample signal. Please note, I have only shifted once left and right. You can continue to shift for multiple values of n. For this numerical, I will stop at n is equals to 1 because any further shifting is not going to create any significant changes. Now, this is a spectrum of the sampled signal and when you go back to the numerical, you will see that the reconstruction filter has a bandwidth of 2. So, let us come back to the spectra and draw the ideal reconstruction filter structure. Please note, I am going to now draw the amplitude response of the ideal reconstruction filter. Right. So, the amplitude response has a value of 1 divided by 2 w. Please remember that. In the first part of the numerical, we are told the value of w is equal to 2. So, this will be minus 2 and this will be plus 2. So, when I pass the spectra of the sample signal through the ideal reconstruction filter with the amplitude response as shown in the diagram here, the spectrum that appears at the output of this ideal reconstruction filter is
right now what is interesting here is to note the amplitudes of these samples please remember the amplitudes of the samples of the sample signal are 2 and that of the reconstruction filter is 1 divided by 2 w and therefore the amplitudes of each of these samples will be 1 divided by 2 once again now when you come back and look at the spectra of the input signal you will find that the samples have the same amplitude as a conclusion now i can write that when i perform sampling the input signal x of t equals cos 2 pi t with a fs equals to 4 and then pass the sample signal spectra through an ideal reconstruction filter with w equals to 2 the reconstruction of the original signal is completely possible so i'll write as a conclusion here right so that is about the part a of the numerical let us now move on to the part b where the value of ts is equals to 2 by 3 and the value of w is equal to 2 since ts equals to 2 by 3 the value of fs is equal to 3 divided by 2 and is equal to 1.5 when you come back and look at the numerical we are given x of t as cos 2 pi t with w equals to 1 hertz as per the ideal sampling theorem the minimum value of fs should be equal to 2 w which is 2 hertz but for case 2 the value of fs is 1.5 hertz therefore we can right away say that reconstruction is not possible for this case I'm going to leave the part B of this numerical as an exercise for you, but I already have given you the final answer that is the reconstruction is not possible. Use the same approach as what I have shown for part E of the question and you should be able to get the correct results. Well, that's about this video. If you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.